Uh, because what I, what I read about him, you know, and, and study about him over the years, because you want to know what the family was like, uh, mm -hmm. they say, based on what you read about, he was more psychopath. psychopath. He was a psycho. He was meaner. He was more vicious than his father ever was. He took the level of viciousness to new heights. Is, is that a pretty true statement or was his father more vicious than he was? No, he is. He passed his father. He passed a lot. At least his father, when he was doing all this stuff, he had strategy in his life. He was doing that for a politic issue, for something he wanted to get in Iraq. But today he was doing it for maniac things. There's nothing is benefit of him. Uh, you don't know what he wants. Sometimes you see him really laugh with a big mouth and half an hour later sitting in a corner crying like a baby. This kind of a day, uh, personality. You don't know what he wants. You don't know why he's doing that. Uh, when he drunk, uh, twice I heard from him, he said to me, my dad don't like me, he like Kosai more than me. This is why he don't want to give me a power. This is why he put Kosai uh, as a head of his security. He didn't put me. I want to answer him, but I, but I, I know my neck going to be bye-bye. Now, Kosai was a little bit more reserved to himself. He was a little shy, a little qu quiet, but uh, he was calculating. He had his dad's calculating side based on what I read about him, uh, uh, but he wasn't that uh, uh, public about it. And I know I, I know no. there was one time where he became the leader of Secret Service, and his dad, I think in 1984, made Uday the chairman of the Iraqi Olympic uh, Committee, yeah. and he wanted this to be the, the Secret funny. Service. Yeah. Uh, Kosai, the second son, he's more close to his dad. This is why his dad trusts him more. One, he's not like Oday. He married, even he's the youngest one. He's very, very clever. For me personally, I like him. Uh, uh, very, very intelligent. Uh, he treats his people with him as a friend and a brother. He don't hurt them like Ode, what he do. If he don't like you, even your clothes in my as a group, as a fun, they say, okay, take him, uh, shave his head, shave his eyebrows, uh, send him to this place where be tortured. Okay, just for fun, for 10 days. Enough, he's joking. And this is what he do. But Jose, no, no. He give a chance, second. He sit with you, talk in a human way uh, sometimes he say to you don't look at me as Saddam uh, son look at me as a brother to your friend why you behave like that but Saddam and Kosai they was very hard and strong with their family and they tried for example if any Iraqi do something wrong I give you the example maybe get forgiveness a lot of forgiveness happened at the time. But anybody belong to Saddam family, cousin or cousin of cousin, or coming from Tikrit, he been 10 times punished more than normal person. Because Saddam and Kosai, they was telling them, when you behave like that, you hit in my name. And Saddam, to be very honest with you, he was caring about his name so much. I saw one of his, uh, he was captain. Yeah, he was captain. One of the times they sent me for torture and was Saddam closes, you know, security with him. And from Tikrit, because he did something unusual in the street, you know, he, he hit the traffic light or something was red and put, he sent him where I was being tortured for a month, and he's a captain, and he's Saddam family. Because he hit a red light? Yeah. He said, because you behave, you are belong to Saddam name. When people know you are my bodyguard, 
and behave like that, how the normal people go to respect the law. Did, did, did the, did the fa- it seemed like the father and the son were always uh, uh, at war, like uh, Saddam and Uday. I remember one time, I think, did, did, um, did Uday one time accidentally shoot off his uh, uncle, Saddam's uh, uh, brother? Brother. What yeah, happened, brother, what happened yeah. to that story? Uh, this is after I left. Oh, that's after you. I hear, yeah. I, after I left, I heard it from one of these guys was with him. Uh, but I tell you about Kamil Hanna, what was Saddam te- uh, food tester, and his Saddam was calling me, calling him son. You know, more very close to him. He's a Christian person, but he and his family worked all for Saddam since he was a kid. And uh, I remember was a party, and Mubarak, president of Egypt, ex. Uh, president visit Iraq and Kamil Hanna did a party for them, you know, as a welcome into the country. I think by order of Saddam to do a welcome party for them. We was uh, like a few buildings in Al Habbaniya, and uh, we coming from Habbaniya to this place where it's called uh, probably Palace space or something like that as i can't translate it exactly in english uh, i was sitting and Uday he was going around kamil hanna invite every single one except Uday. and uh, at the time it was a few months or less than a year Saddam married secretly, and this is what I break the news when I come out. Uh, Another woman, uh, her name Samira, and uh, was true Kamil Hanna. And Uday, he hated Kamil Hanna because of that. How you get a woman instead of my mother. And here was a war between them, but he can't touch him because he know how valuable Kamil Hanna to Saddam and very close to him. He can't touch him. Anyway, he started drinking. He can hear the music and the singer from the other side. How day he say to one of these guys around him, go tell him because Kamil Hanna, I think he become a little bit drunk. He took his machine gun as celebration, you know, in Middle East. Shining mm-hmm. as a welcome. Uh, he told him, Go tell this idiot to stop shooting. He went and he saw Kamil Hanna, he was shooting. And Kamil Hanna told him, Tell Oday, I'm not taking order of him. The only person I took order of him is Saddam Hussein. And uh, it's like I was sitting in the couch and my leg is up and another guy was having fun drink. Or they, he have like a, a sticker, but very long with a hard head and you can take, take it up as a sword. When you pull it up, as a sword inside. He went and we, we, Go after him. Where are you going? Nobody talked to me. Nobody pushing here and pushing here. We went around. He went to Kamil Hanna <clears throat> with this heavy stick straight away to his head. Few times you can see the blood just keep going, keep going. Take the knife straight away, cut his neck, take the gun, start shooting here and there. Everyone terrified. They took Mubarak wife. In the different car, <coughs> and uh, straight away the palace informed Kamil Hanna he'd been shot and been this and that. I remember the president coming into the garden with the cars. A day he ran to where we was. He went to the bathroom and closed the door, shut it down completely. Uh, screaming in the bathroom, 
We try to open the door, asking him to open the door, nothing. He keeps screaming, screaming till completely the voice is gone. And no more, he can't, I can't hear. We call him, we call him, no answer. We break the door. He was on the floor. He took a lot of tablets, was, I don't know what they are. A lot, he took it a lot, he wanted to kill himself. Uh, put him in the car to the hospital. Was hospital belonged to the palace called Ibn Sina. And uh, in this hospital, they did what they did with him. Uh, we was around him, President Common. Uh, but he looked at everyone as a piece of dirt. Uh, why he didn't stop him and this? He took a day. He was lying in the bed and took him like that, start slapping him. You must be dead, you must be this, is you're shaming me, shaming the family. And anyway, I will put you in the jail for all your life. And if I can hang you, but I leave this to the justice, he said. And he put Saddam order, he put the judge is the one of the most powerful person in Iraq. <clears throat> and he said, don't look at him as my son. Judge him as a murder for any person. And believe it or not, okay, we say what they say, Saddam dictator and like that. But the judge, he sent Oday to death penalty. Uh, 